Alchemy has had a long-standing relationship with art, seen both in alchemical texts and in mainstream entertainment. Literary alchemy appears throughout the history of English literature from Shakespeare to modern fantasy authors. Here, characters or plot structure follow an alchemical magnum opus. In the 14th century, Chaucer began a trend of alchemical satire that can still be seen in recent fantasy works like those of Terry Pratchett. Visual artists had a similar relationship with alchemy. While some of them used alchemy as a source of satire, others worked with the alchemists themselves or integrated alchemical thought or symbols in their work. Music was also present in the works of alchemists and continues to influence popular performers. In the last hundred years, alchemists have been portrayed in a magical and spagyric role in fantasy fiction, film, television, comics and video games. Visual art Jan Backlund and Jacob Womberg categorize alchemical art into the following four groups Images made within the alchemical culture proper Genre images which portray alchemists and their environment Religious, mythological or genre images which appropriate alchemical ideas or motifs as a kind of Panofskian disguised symbolism, and Images which show structural affinities with alchemy without iconographically alluding to it. Within the first group are the illuminations and emblems found within the alchemical texts themselves. Illustrations appeared in early works such as the Chrysopoeia of Cleopatra but were largely absent in medieval works until the mid-13th century. In the early 15th century, significant pictorial elements began to appear in alchemical works such as the Ripley Scroll and the Mutus Liber. This trend developed further in 16th century emblems. Inspired by the work of Horopoyo, this allegorical art form was adopted by alchemists and used in the engravings of Matthias Marion, Lucas Genus, Johann Theodor de Bry, Aegidius Sadeller, and others. The trend of depicting alchemists in genre works began with Peter Bruegel the Elder, c. 1525-1569, and was continued in the work of Jan Steen, 1626-1679, and David Teniers the Younger, 1610-16. 90. Alchemy has also played a role in the evolution of paint. Alchemists and pigment manufacture intersect as early as the Leiden Papyrus X and Stockholm Papyrus, and as late as Robert Boyle's Origin of Forms and Qualities 1666. The pigment recipes of artists such as Senino Senini and Theophilus have been influenced by both the practical and theoretical aspects of alchemy, and contained some allegorical and magical elements. Topic. Modern art and exhibition Some contemporary artists use alchemy as inspiring subject matter, or use alchemical symbols in their work. While alchemy is marginal to current visual art, alchemical thinking remains central. Some lesser-known artists such as Brett Whiteley, Krzysztof Gleszczynski, and Terezy Olten openly use alchemical symbols. On the other hand, alchemical influences in the work of renowned artists such as Jackson Pollock, Marcel Duchamp and Salvador Dali may be more superficial, and not the primary importance of the work. It is more the idea of alchemy, than alchemy itself, that has influenced these artists. Other examples of alchemy in modern art include Michael Pierce, Fama and the Aviator's Dream Adam McLean Max Ernst Odd Nerdrum Matthew Barney, Wren 2008, Guardian of the Veil vale, 2007 and KHU 2010. Anselm Kiefer Michael Mashka, The Alchemist 1995, Hermaphrodite 2016. Ruben Kadish, A Dissertation on Alchemy 1937. Fresco in San Francisco Topic. Novels and plays Like alchemy in visual art, the intersection of alchemy and literature can be broken down into four categories The alchemical texts themselves Satirical attacks on alchemists 
stories that incorporate alchemical iconography, and works that are structurally alchemical, known as literary alchemy. In the first category are the writings of alchemists. Beginning with Zosimos of Panopolis AD 300 and extending through the history of alchemy, texts appear in the alchemical corpus that are more allegorical than technical. A much later example of this can be found in the Chymical Wedding of Christian Rosenkreutz 1616. In the second category are critiques of alchemical charlatanism. Starting in the 14th century, some writers lampooned alchemists and used them as the butt of satirical attacks. Some early and well-known examples are Dante Alighieri, Inferno CA. 1308-1321 William Langland, Piers Plowman CA. 1360-1387 Geoffrey Chaucer, Canon's Yeoman's Tale CA. 1380 Ben Jonson, The Alchemist CA. 1610 William Godwin, Saint Leon, 1799. A number of 19th century works incorporated alchemy, including Mary Shelley, Frankenstein, 1818. Vladimir Odevsky, Salamandra, 1828. Victor Hugo, The Hunchback of Notre Dame, 1831. Goethe's Faust, Part II, 1832. Friedrich Holm, Der Adept, 1836 In 20th and 21st century examples, alchemists are generally presented in a more romantic or mystic light, and often little distinction is made between alchemy, magic, and witchcraft. Alchemy has become a common theme in fantasy fiction. <laughs> <laughs> Literary alchemy The term Literary alchemy dates back to at least 1971, when Jennifer R. Walters used it as the title of her essay Literary Alchemy in Diacritics magazine. Stanton J. Linden, in his 1996 Dark Hieroglyphics, Alchemy in English Literature from Chaucer to the Restoration, applies the term both to stories which deal extensively with alchemists and the process of alchemy of which the earliest is Chaucer's The Canon's Yeoman's Tale, and stories which include alchemical allegory or imagery of which the most extensive and well-known is The Chymical Wedding of Christian Rosenkreutz. John Granger, who studies the literary alchemy in J.K. Rowling's, Harry Potter series explains, If you recall your Aristotle on what happens in a proper tragedy, the audience identifies with the hero in his agony and shares in his passion. This identification and shared passion is effectively the same as the experience of the event. The audience experiences catharsis or purification in correspondence with the actors. Shakespeare and Johnson, among others, used alchemical imagery and themes because they understood that the work of the theater in human transformation was parallel if not identical to the work of alchemy in that same transformation. The alchemical work was claimed to be greater than an imaginative experience in the theater, but the idea of purification by identification or correspondence with an object and its transformations was the same in both. In an early example, Sir Thomas Mallory uses alchemy as a motif that underlies the personal, psychological, and aesthetic development of Sir Gareth of Orkney in La Morte d'Arthur. Sir Gareth's quest parallels the process of alchemy in that he first undergoes the Negretto phase by defeating the Black Knight and wearing his armor. After this, Gareth defeats knights representing the four elements, thereby subsuming their power. In fighting and defeating the Red Knight the overall purpose of his quest, he undergoes and passes the Rubedo phase. Gareth, toward the end of his quest, accepts a ring from his paramour, Lioness, which transforms his armor into multicolors. This alludes to the panchromatic philosopher's stone, and while he is in multicolored armor, he is unbeatable. The Tempest is the most alchemically influenced of all William Shakespeare's work, steeped as it is in alchemical imagery dying kings and sons, Ariel as the spirit Mercurius etc. with Prospero as the archetypal Magus. The main character in the play Good Night Desdemona Good Morning Juliet, by Anne-Marie MacDonald, succeeds in determining the alchemy behind Shakespeare's Othello. Literary alchemy continues to be popular in novels such as Paolo Coelho's The Alchemist 1988. 
David Meekin, in his 1995 book Hermetic Fictions, alchemy and irony in the novel is unusual in categorizing stories as alchemic even if they do not mention alchemists or alchemy, nor include alchemic allegory or imagery, so long as they include elements which obliquely remind him personally of alchemy. For instance, he considers any book about a writer alchemic, because, writing is a kind of alchemy. Captain Nemo's submarine The Nautilus is alchemic because it is a hermetically closed cell. All submarines are airtight, ergo, hermetically closed. The game from Hermann Hesse's The Glass Bead Game is concerned with the quest for perfection of knowledge, therefore Meekin considers it an intellectual alchemy. Quote, the list of authors who do not mention alchemy or alchemists, nor use alchemical allegory or imagery, but who use ideas which obliquely remind Meekin of alchemy include William Godwin, Percy Bysshe Shelley, Emile Zola, Jules Verne, Marcel Proust, Thomas Mann, Hermann Hesse, James Joyce, Gustav Meyerinck, Lindsay Clark, Marguerite Yorsnar, Umberto Eco, Michel Buter, Amanda Quick, Gabriel Garcia Marquez and Maria Zapes. Topic music Some Renaissance alchemists expressed their ideas through music. A similar trend continues today as some musicians express themselves using alchemy. Heinrich Kuhnrath's Amphitheatrum Sapientiae Eternae contains illustrations of musical instruments alongside the text. Sacred music disperses sadness and malignant spirits, suggesting that music may have played a role in alchemical practice. The strongest example of music within alchemy can be found in the 17th-century work of Michael Mayer. His Atalanta Fugines included fifty fugues. The fugues were arranged in three voices symbolizing the philosopher's stone, the pursuing adept, and obstacles in his way. These have also been interpreted as corresponding to the alchemical tria prima. The text of Mayer's Cantilene Intellectuales de Finis Redivivo is organized similarly, in three musical voices. Mayer writes, All things in this universe, all forms, heavenly or earthly, being created in number, weight, and measure, there is, between them, an exact and marvelous proportion of parts, strengths, qualities, quantities and effects, such that, together they seem to resemble an extraordinarily harmonious music, and there is between spiritual beings, amongst which is to be numbered the mind, or intellect in man, a similar musical concord. Tis the same too for the hidden subject of the hermetic philosophers, a sort of philosophical micro-world, naturally divided into three ordered parts, bass, tenor and soprano, just as the hammers heard by Pythagoras in the smithy played a pleasant harmony by reason of their various and proportional weights. Alchemy continues to influence musicians. In more recent times, concept albums have been created around alchemical motifs. Alchemy can be incorporated into song or album structure, cover art, and lyrics. Some examples include Topic: <laughs> Film, television, and webisode. Literary alchemy has been extended to film and television. The alchemical quest is plainly visible to the audience in movies such as The Holy Mountain, 1973. The Vanishing 1988 is a less conspicuous example. Based on The Golden Egg, this film features direct alchemical devices such as the appearance of the Mutu's Liber. More significantly, the plot can be seen alchemically, as the villain completes a twisted interpretation of the alchemical great work. In the American remake of The Vanishing 1993, the alchemical elements were stripped. Alchemical influence may also be seen in film adaptations of myths and legends. Evidence of an alchemical interpretation of Jason and the Golden Fleece can be found as early as the writings of John of Antioch, 7th century. The alchemical ties to this and other myths continued through to Renaissance alchemists, notably in the 15th-century alchemical book Orium Velis Golden Fleece attributed to Solomon Trismosin. Newer incarnations of these stories like Jason and the Argonauts 1963 film have the capacity to carry forward alchemical allegory on film. Movies like the Harry Potter film series, serve the same function for more recent fiction. Like other 20th-century forms of entertainment, movies and shows featuring alchemy often include elements of magic and fantasy. 
Sometimes this extends to magic realism as is in Parish Pathar 1958, and Hudson Hawk 1991. This same sort of portrayal can be found in science fantasy movies like Nine 2009, or in fantasy films like The Dark Crystal 1982, 2014's horror fantasy film as above, so below also featured these concepts. Experimental film The experimental filmmaker James Whitney planned a series of four alchemical films in the mid-1970s. Of these only one was made, called Dwija described by William Wees as an alchemical vessel dissolving and materializing again and again within a pulsating stream of colored light. Jordan Belson and Harry Everett Smith also referenced alchemical ideas and imagery in their experimental films. The German experimental filmmaker Jürgen Rebel has referenced alchemical processes in his physical and chemical manipulation of the filmstrip, describing one particular work, alchemy, as bridging the gap between the processing and fixing of the film. In 2010 the moving image artist Richard Ashroen created a video installation, Alchemist, which used texts by the 12th century alchemist Michael Scott and included performances related to alchemical themes. <laughs> <laughs> Comics and cartoons Alchemy and alchemical concepts appear in comics and cartoons, as well as Japanese manga and anime in a fashion consistent with 20th century fantasy fiction. A few examples that feature alchemy heavily are The Fabulous Philosopher's Stone 1955, Indiana Jones and the Iron Phoenix 1994, Fullmetal Alchemist series Fullmetal Alchemist 2003 and Fullmetal Alchemist Brotherhood 2009 Bacano 2003 Buso Renkin 2003 to 2006 Anima Mundi Dark Alchemist 2004 Arcana Familia 2012 Topic <laughs> Video Games Alchemy is an element in numerous fantasy genre games. Characters can be portrayed or played as alchemists. Transmutation, spagyric potion making, homunculi, and alchemically created items may be incorporated into the gameplay. Games which include alchemical concepts include 